this uh, person is either called an executive member, which is sometimes a difficult name because often he or she is the senior, is the junior member, so he's not the chair of the board. But it's often because he or she is either geographically closer or is uh, more accessible um, electronically or otherwise, who is the primary point of contact with the board, who can then f can facilitate internal board communication, internal board communication. But this person, at the very least, should be contacted frequently and should be contacted early in the various phases of the advisory points of contact and the management points of contact. A um, fourth point that was mentioned and stressed by the Fokaha, and it's very important by the members, is the importance of having implementation and application reviewed. So um, because of the effort associated with putting in a lot of effort into producing products and services, often management feels as though the, the um, uh, end of the line, the target, is the launch and getting the certificate of compliance, the COC, the fatwa associated with that. And in fact, that's just the beginning of the process, as you've heard from many of our, um, uh, our uh, professionals who are already involved in, in financial services. After that, monitoring and regular compliance reviews must be done because one runs the risk of falling into situations like those mentioned by Sheikh Asnan. And from among the things that we often don't like to see but sometimes do see, and it's happened to me on boards that I sit on as well, is where individuals have taken certificates of compliance from 5, 10, 15 years ago from a panel or a Sharia board that applied to a product like the product they think that they're um, offering, made it available on their website or referred to it in a footnote, and caused confusion in the community as to whether they actually have an independent Sharia review panel compliant with OAFI standards that is regularly advising on and reviewing the product that they are actually offering from time to time and from period uh, to period. So these are from among the things that were referred to and alluded to by the scholars that I also wanted to uh, uh, mention in, um, in my uh, experiences sitting on boards with some of them or on other boards as well um, that are particular issues inside of North America, inside of the U.S. and inside of Canada. Um, we're well over time, but uh, do we have time for a, 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 perhaps a question? Uh, Shazad? Do we have time for a question? Yes. Uh, yes. Maybe okay, please. Um, yourself and then yourself. And then third afterwards. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar Shakfa. I'm a recent graduate in, from Masters in Finance. Yes. Now, I believe there is a, some kind of a problem that I faced, especially when I was doing my, when writing my thesis, which is on Islamic portfolio management, which is about Sharia compliance. Is that a lot of people in the conventional industry, in the conventional finance industry, they don't understand it very well. The, the different laws that are, the different rulings that are set by Sharia boards, and uh, a lot of them will see it. I, I had these comments during when I was presenting my uh, my topic. Is that you know, they're using, basically using religion for the purpose of marketing uh, their products. And it's especially by the use of, uh, you know, putting Islamic na uh, Arabic names to some uh, financial products. And also, I, I got a criticism from the fact that, uh, maybe I'm going off topic from the, today's topic, but it's more related to tomorrow's topic, which is on the fact for uh, equity screening for, uh, for stocks, is that there's the ruling of the third law ruling, which is, uh, companies with more than 33% debt to equity should be avoided as long as the main business is halal. But here also, you know, there's the question is that what if the main business is halal, but then let's say it's a, it's a company, it's a restaurant, it's a restaurant chain, and less than 33% of its business involves pork or alcohol products. Why would this be not included, and why uh, a company that has less than, uh, that, that has less than 33% of, uh, of debt will be included? Thank you. Does any of the panel want to uh, address the two questions mentioned there? One, one was with regard to the uh, general issue of um, the reluctance to see any place for ethical concerns or religious concerns within the realm of uh, finance and, and the, the difficulty sometimes in um, bringing people to, uh, to accept that this is a possible approach. And the third was with, with regard, second was with regard to this specific issue of some of the screens associated with some equity filters <coughs> and questions as to how they're applied. I can take Please. questions. Sheikh will do the same. And the first one, 
I mean, we, uh, the commun Muslim community across the globe in different jurisdictions, in different places, uh, is faced with the same challenge and problem, that overtly naming the Islamic products, Arabic names, or very religiously connotated names, or very, very heavy, value-loaded names, is uh, giving, not serving the industry. On, on the contrary, it sometimes is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So, as, uh, so in your case, uh, really for the familiarization of the general public or the consumers, you, we can, uh, the Arabic name or whatever names can be used because the names are indicative of their features and their acceptability or cultural familiarity. Uh, so it is appropriate to use it in a, a demographic where that language or that, uh, na that, that naming can be very familiar. But to name exotic names here in the United States or North America and Western countries, a very Arabic name is not very uh, productive. So it is advised that we, there is no Sharia requirement to name the product very, very uh, outwardly. Name could be anything which is indicative of, uh, in any language, in any semantics. As long as the underlying structure, product features are Sharia compliant, it's not required. I think uh, many institutions to gain some marketing advantages, they use this overtly Arabic and very heavy uh, value-loaded la names to gain its uh, acceptability, which is not really very good. So, and, and th this is not a unique problem to the Islamic finance. This is also very well known in the, f in the ethical world also. In ethical financial, financial world, they also argued with the, about the val namings and values, you know, like sustainability is the now the word, but previously there was, you know, lots of other names, which I don't need to go into details, but uh, I have written a paper on this and the discussion is there that it should be humanly neutral, uh, just indicative of what it is for, rather than uh, force forcing the very, very strange, exotic, and value-related thing. Uh, I just want to add one minute. See, there are people who are going to criticize the Islamic finance in industry, whatever name you give to the products. Uh, for those who have good intentions, I agree with Maulana al-Mufti that, you know, nobody has insisted on Arabic names, but there are reasons for using them. Reasons being, first of all, that there are some contracts in Islamic law which have been, which are called al-uqud al-musamma, you know, the, these nominated contracts, the well-known contracts. So the general public, when they go to their muftis, to their imams, wherever in the world they are, these imams and muftis are trained in Arabic. Whether they are in Bangladesh, whether they are in Turkey, whether they are in Pakistan, whether they are in anywhere. So these muftis are trained in the texts of Arabic. So if you tell them lease and, and they are not well trained, what type of lease? They, they may think that this lease is only a secular lease, which is a financial lease and it's uh, uh, you know, infested with riba. So these names which have been used by Islamic financial industries is because to make these muftis and scholars familiarize with these names. So if we are living in some countries which the muftis are familiar, there is no need. However, the, the, this has been the... Now every industry has a voc vocabulary. So this is istilah, la mashahata fil istilah. And now these names have been known everywhere. They are used in the FSA website. They are used in the United States, you know, Treasury website and everywhere. So now, after all these things that they are familiarized with it, what is the, what is the problem? 